What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm excited to have you here. This is New Comic Book Day, May the 26th of 2021. And this is an extremely long list. And it's, I don't know, there's really not a lot here I can cut. So before I ramble too long, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, connect, follow, do whatever you do on the platform you're on. Just look for my furry face inside of an orange circle and click all the buttons next to it. So let's start this list with DC. I, I usually try to come with some sort of theme. We're kind of just back at um, sequential order at this point. So we're going to start with DC and then we'll move into uh, the one Marvel title I'm going to grab and then we'll uh, jump into all the indies. So the first book here is Milestone Returns Infinite Edition number zero. The digital version of this dropped back in February on DCUI. If you have that app and that service, go check it out. Go read it. It's free. Um, it's not going to blow your mind, I don't think. But um, there is some cool stuff in there. I thought the Rocket and Icon stuff was really cool. Um, Static X has some good moments. But uh, overall, the book is a little lower quality than I would expect from launching a black themed universe in 2021 it's i don't know it's a little baffling on that aspect of it but there is some cool stuff in it so i would definitely check it out for free if you have the dcui app um i didn't check the price tag on this so i don't know what the print version is going to be it might be worth grabbing if you enjoy those characters if you already know them and all that kind of stuff and you're excited for milestone then it might be worth grabbing but overall i don't know that i would pay out of pocket for this book Robin number two from DC Comics. Um, this is uh, Joshua Williamson with Gleb Melkinov. And uh, Robin number one was awesome. Um, it did a lot of like character building at the beginning. We kind of got the, the state of Gotham and where is Damien kind of stuff. And uh, it really like helped develop the connection between Damien and the Bat family and kind of his position in all of that. Um, we see him do some great stuff, and then he catches a ship and goes across the ocean. He gets to a Mortal Kombat kind of island tournament setup thing. And, um, you know, from there it's just, you know, we're going to have a tournament. He gets into a fight. He's a little too cocky, and uh, his heart gets ripped off, so uh, or gets ripped out. So hopefully we'll find out what that means now, because the last thing we're told is this is a fight to the death. So... All of these matches should be fights to the death, but this has something to do with the Lazarus Pits and all of that stuff, so no reason to believe that anybody's actually going to stay dead. I'm pretty sure Robin will be back in Robin 2. I can't imagine he's going to stay gone for long, so I'm excited for Robin 2. The first one was, um, it was a lot of fun, and it had just enough twists. Like, they weren't, like, crazy mind-blowing stuff, but they were fun twists, and I think that made the whole book a lot more fun, so... Excited for Robin number two. Teen Titans Academy number three will be out. If you've been keeping up with me, you know I'm a big fan of Red X. I've always wanted more from that character. And so they announced Teen Titans Academy. And the mystery of Red X is supposed to be going on in this one. And I'm really enjoying it so far. We saw Suicide Squad number three, which is one of the best series on shelves, bar none. Um, if you're not reading Suicide Squad, you should be. But number three of that series crossed over into Teen Titans Academy. And now Teen Titans Academy is going to be, uh, you know, continuing that story. And so I think it's a two-part story. So this will be the second and final part of that. So it'll be interesting to see why the Suicide Squad is there. How they're going to get um, their, their target. And uh, how this is all going to play out with the rest of the Academy in this issue. Batman Catwoman number five. This is uh, Tom King doing Tom King. I've really enjoyed this series so far. I don't disagree that the fourth one was probably the weakest of the series so far. But it was still better than most books out there. So no complaints for me. I'm really excited for the next one. The book itself does this great job with like theming around like a song and music and stuff. Um, but at the same time like the characters feel like the spiritual successor to um, Batman the Animated Series. They use Mask of the Phantasm in this uh, in this series. 
Uh, Andrea's there. We got Catwoman. Um, Batman Bruce seems to be dead. The Joker is dead at this point. And Batman Selina's daughter is like a new Batman. Um, we haven't got a ton of information on that. But honestly, the ride has been a lot of fun. And I'm excited to see where it goes from here and what happens next. It has all these like intertwining timelines. So even though like Bruce is already dead in like the current true timeline, I guess, um, you know, we're still getting him in flashbacks and stuff. So Batman's there, Joker's there, Catwoman's there, and their daughter is there. Um, and so you're, we, we saw um, Cobblepot in the last one. So there's definitely some really cool stuff going on here. And I'm really excited to see where it goes in issue number five this week. Batman Superman number 18, this is another title that's, I mean, this and Suicide Squad are probably two of the best books that DC is putting out. Um, I would put Action Comics, like, number three on that list. Like, if you're not reading Action Comics, Batman Superman and um, Suicide Squad, like, those are the DC books to be reading. Swamp Thing would be number four. Catwoman would be number five, like... There's a long list of great DC books, but um, Batman Superman number 18, this series is really being slept on, and it's done this great thing. It's introduced this, like, meta plot villain named uh, Autor.io, and um, he basically, like, can run these film strips, and so through these film strips, you're kind of seeing what's going on in different, you know, they can do, like, 1941 Batman and Superman and Robin. You know, but they can do that because it's all taking place in this film reel. And the film reels can, like, kind of cross over and stuff. There's a lot of creative storytelling going on in the book itself. And then it has, like, these really fun, like, old school style stories that kind of, like, genre bend into this, like, meta plot with this Artur I.O. So it, it's a really good book. It's a ton of fun. And uh, I would highly suggest you check out Batman Superman if uh, you like fun books. Detective Comics 1036. This one I'm really interested in. The ending was a little weird at the uh, for th 1035. I really enjoyed everything in that issue. And then we kind of got to the end and they like introduced what seems to be a zombie. Um, it's not like a huge stretch to get there, I guess. But at the same time, like it just didn't feel like anything else in the world that we're in right now. So I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, I imagine there's some sort of twist here where... She looks like a zombie, but she's not really a zombie or something, you know. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Again, Dan Mora on the artwork just makes it so easy to look at and so easy to read. And, um, you know, then Tamaki doing all the writing has just put together a great story. And I'm really enjoying Detective Comics much better than Tynan's Batman. Ugh. Action Comics 1031. Now, this... This is such a good series. Philip Kennedy Johnson's been writing, bouncing this storyline back and forth between uh, Action Comics and Superman. And then the last Action Comics pretty much dropped that. Like, 1030 dropped that. It just kind of went in its own direction. Um, both Clark and Jonathan were both there in the last issue. Um, and it had a great ending, so I'm really excited for that. But we do know that Jonathan is going to be going off into the Superman title and they're going to rebrand it uh, Son of Kal-El. So um, it'll be interesting to see what Action Comics is going to do this week to change things and move the path more in the direct, like more diverging paths instead of, uh, you know, being on this like similar storyline that's going back and forth. So I'm excited for Action Comics. I really love the way that 1030 ended and I can't wait to see how 1031 is going to move that forward while also kind of setting up uh, these diverging pathways. That's it for DC for this week. So, I mean, that's already a big list. And, whew, you talk about hard to cut. Beta Ray Bill number three will be out from Marvel this week. This is the only Marvel title on my list at this point. Um, well, this and Thor, but I don't think we've had a Thor book in a while now for some reason. So, um... Yeah, anyway, Beta Ray Bill, number three, Daniel Warren Johnson doing the art and the writing. His work is always great. If you're not familiar, you should definitely get caught up. Um, Extremity's pretty cool, but definitely Murder Falcon, definitely Wonder Woman, Dead Earth, and um, now you want to be reading Beta Ray Bill 3. 
Daniel Warren Johnson is amazing. He does great stuff. Beta Ray Bill number two had all kinds of great Easter eggs and stuff. So I would not sleep on this title. I love it. But I don't want to like spend forever talking about it because it is a Daniel Warren Johnson experience, which means it's predictable in like the most unpredictable way. And it's definitely going to make you feel something in every issue. So check this one out for sure. Now, if you're my age or similar to my age, this next book is something that, you know, is probably already, you've already been waiting for it for a while now. This is TMNT, The Last Ronin, number three. This is um, a ton of creators that if they've ever touched Ninja Turtles at some point, they're probably working on this book right now. Um, these are very large, oversized books. Uh, I think they're called Prestige Format because they're much larger. Um, I forget the page count. They're a little bit bigger, but not like huge. I want to say they're like 30 or 40 pages. Um, and, and they're just telling the story of like the end of the Ninja Turtles, it seems. And it's great. Like I've really enjoyed uh, the first two issues. I'm excited for the third one. It's a little frustrating that they only come out like every three months or something at this point. Um, you know, there's been some different things that have happened that have caused some delays. Um, I think it's only like four or five issues. So they're definitely trying to kind of pace it out, you know, and, and it's great. It's a really good read. Um, it's just like so much time between you kind of have to go back and reread them quite a bit. And uh, I'll be excited... I'll be excited for when we get like a hardcover edition of this. It's probably going to be like 50 bucks. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's going to cost us a pretty penny to get our hands on. But I kind of think that this story is going to read really well in a hardcover book. And it's probably going to look great on a coffee table somewhere. There's an image number one coming out. This is made in Korea. And, um, you know, I was a little hesitant to add another book to the list, obviously. But I read the uh, synopsis on this one and it really sold me. And um, so it takes place kind of like in the near future. And they've create they've started creating like android cyborg children, you know, that families can adopt. And um, it's kind of exploring like what that would be like. What does parenthood really mean through the lens of like this non-organic child of yours, you know? You have to instill these morals and these values in um, these children that you're raising, but they're not human. So, like, where where is the morality and um, the humanity and all of those sorts of things? At the same time, these robots also seem very deadly. So, it seems like we might get something really cool out of this. I'm definitely going to check out the first issue. Um, and if it sells me, I'll stay on till at least three. And then they have until three to sell me on the rest of the run. But um, I definitely want to check out this first one. The artwork is pretty cool. It's not anything super amazing, but it's also um, kind of stylized in its own way. And uh, I thought the book looked pretty cool. I thought the premise sounded cool. And so I'm going to go ahead and check out the number one and uh, see what it's all about. So that's Made in Korea. Shadow Man number two from Valiant. This is Colin Bunn. Um, I'm a big fan of the Valiant Universe. I love their story as a company. I love the stories they tell in their books. Um, I like the way that they run their universe. I think that pretty much everybody in the comics industry could uh, take a page out of their rule book as far as like managing a universe. Um, and I like Shadow Man as a character. I've read some of the, uh, I think it was like 2017 um, issues of the Shadow, Mon Shadow Man run from there. I enjoyed the first one in this issue. Colin Bunn has written quite a few different characters like this. Um, he did Punk Mambo. Um, and that was like a five-issue series. Uh, he did Roku. That was like a five-issue series. Um, he's done a couple of others. So he tends to do like all these like five and six-issue miniseries of these characters for Valiant. Which, again, plays well into the way they manage their universe. If Marvel and DC would get it together over there. Um, and so, like... I've really enjoyed what Colin Bunn does with these runs. I enjoyed what he did with the first Shadow Man here. And so I'm excited to see how the rest of this run plays out. That's from Valiant. Check them out. Like, they have a great universe with a lot of great characters. So, uh, you know, don't sleep on that for sure. Nuclear Family number four. This one might actually get cut. I 
I don't know. I don't even know that I read the third one. The book is not bad. I was impressed with a lot of it. It has some cool twists and turns along the way. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is that the art just hasn't really hooked me. It's not bad. It's just not unique enough to stand out in my mind. And um, I remember more of the about the writing and like how the twists were written than I remember about what I even saw in the book because it's just very like very well done plain Jane um, artwork. So I don't know. I might drop that one just because the pool list is getting really big at this point and. I'm it, I'm kind of looking for books I can take off of the list right now. So, Nuclear Family might be one of those. I Breathe the Body, number five. This has been a blast. I'm not sure how long this one is. Um, I want to say it's like six issues. Um, but I'll have to check into that to make sure. However, I really enjoyed it. It's a body horror kind of book. It's from Zach Thompson, who has written plenty of, like, horror-related things. That's kind of what he's good at. Um, exploring, like, humanity through horror, I guess. And uh, human nature and what our, like, deepest fears are and things like that. Um, he does that well here. He's working with Andy McDonald, who, I might be wrong on this, but I believe did the art for Rogue Planet with Colin Bunn. And I really love that book for just, like, the... I don't know, the pure the pure weirdness of it all. Like, these astronauts land on a planet and there's, like, these crazy, like, meat towers and all this stuff. And um, it just, like, it cares not about the characters, but it does care about, like, the world and what you're exploring. And so I feel like that's something that Andy, Andy McDonald and his artwork also bring to I Breathe the Body. Um, it's a lot of, like body manipulation and mutilation and things like that but they all it all means something and it's very well tied together through the artwork it's like very thematic so i've really enjoyed i breathe the body i'm excited to find out more about what's going on in this crazy crazy world and uh hopefully they breathe the body pretty soon department of truth number nine this is a james tynan book and um it, it you know it's Department of Truth. It's got like 9 million covers. One of them's really good. The rest of them are all like kind of hit and miss here and there. Um, I don't know what to tell you the story about the story. Most people stuck on the book through number 6. And then 7 and 8 did this like... Wait, I'm sorry. Maybe it was 5. And then 6 and 7 did a weird... Uh, did like some weird stuff with other artists. They explored like history and... Um, the early days of the Department of Truth and kind of gave us like this concrete grounding for this crazy world that we're in. So I'm excited with number nine. We got Martin Simmons back on artwork. That's always the best for this book. And I can't wait to see what we find out in number nine. Bitterroot number 13. I've been talking about this book quite a bit lately. I'm excited to find out what's going to happen next. In the last issue, we saw that... Um, Cullen and Ford had went to tell Jimmy Ray's uh, family that he had, you know, he had, unfortunately, his life had been lost in the war against racism. And, um, you know, they did not take that very well. Mama Jimmy Ray, <laughs> or whatever her name is, uh, she decided to attack Ford and then her husband took her down because he recognized the hatred in her and that um, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't like her, but it was her. And so he took her out. And so you kind of get this like crazy. And then Colin's out in the forest, like <laughs> fighting this crazy tree that seems to be possessed by um, Sylvester. So it's interesting. Like, I, I'm not, I don't know. Like this arc has been a little bit different from the first two arcs. And so it seems to be taking his time getting going. But we're also getting a lot of really cool stuff like that. I love that they went back to Jimmy Ray's home and uh, told his family what happened and that the mom reacted that way. Because it just goes to show you, like, the fact that, like, generation to generation, we can change. Like, we can be better than those that came before us. And, you know, or I'm sorry, Johnny Ray. Uh, <laughs> Johnny Ray loved his mama. You know, he was a Southern raised white boy that loved his mama. You know, that was... That was his mom. And so, like, that's totally relatable as a southern-raised white boy. But 
at the same time, like we also saw like this huge generational shift as Johnny Ray came to accept the Sangriers as um, people, like other people as, you know, citizens, I guess, you know, like we're all in this together and he helped them fight the good fight and he lost his life fighting for equality um, in a more metaphorical sense, you know. And so to me, like, it's really great to see them go back and talk to Johnny Ray's family and see that some of the family can understand what had happened, but some of the family cannot. And that, um, you know, sometimes you, you kind of have to separate yourself from family in order to make the world a better place. And I don't know how to frame it better than your family versus the world. There's, you know, kind of a list of priorities here. And I mean, I guess I'll be honest, like I'm at odds with a lot of my family because of their racist tendencies. And uh, it's not always easy. It's not always fun. And I definitely hate having to deal with that aspect of my life. But, um, you know, I would never not walk out of my family's house if they started speaking a certain way. I just, I can't wrap my head around it. And I absolutely hate it. But it is what it is. I love Bitter Root. Even if this is not, doesn't end up being the strongest story arc, I do feel like it's a slower burn and they're starting to like seed some really great things. And, um, oh, I'm sorry. We also have Ma Edda and Blink and Nora. Um, you know, they're dealing with a lot of things. Blink and Nora have this really weird relationship because they've kind of been through the same thing separately. And that experience itself is unique to each person. So it's this thing where like they kind of understand each other, but not quite. And so you kind of got a ships in the night kind of situation going on there. And then Ma Edda is trying to bring the family together and solve the actual issues here with um, all the racism and hatred and stuff. And it's just really hard to bring this family together. The Sangreers have a very long history of uh, different angles and aspects on different issues and um, again, it's just like a great metaphorical reflection on how complicated and messy being a human really is. And I think that's what I love about this series is that, you know, even if this third arc isn't coming together quite as clean as the first two did, it's still dealing in this like human nature realm that really just like fascinates and interests me. And I love the message that's being, you know, stamped and postmarked on every book that goes out the door. Not to mention, hashtag, back matter matters. Something is killing the children, number 16. This is Boom Studios. This is a long-awaited return by um, by many. You know, this was... Um, this is a book that... I started reading at number one, and it, it took off like wildfire. I mean, Dustin from Two Brothers is very deeply into it. Skeff over at Skeff's Comic Knowledge, he's really into it. Um, Tyler from Shattered Glass Comic Reviews and Whack Comics, um, very, very into it. Um, so there's a lot of stuff and a lot of people in this community that, community that absolutely love this series. And I think we've all been like anxiously awaiting the next, um, you know, the next installment in this. And we know that this is going to go back and give us some of Erica's origin story and, um, show and tell us where she came from and how she became, the character that we know and love today. And so I'm excited to find all that out. There is this weird thing. And I just listed a bunch of people that I could probably send a message to and find out in 10 seconds. But my understanding was the inter house slaughter free comic book day issue was supposed to kind of lead into this uh, new story arc. That's going to tell her origins, which in my mind kind of reminds me of the uh, road to Ranger Slayer issue that um boom studios did for free comic book day i think two years ago now which seems really long ago but maybe not too long ago anyway free comic book day they put out this um this free comic book day issue called uh road to ranger slayer and it was basically reprinted material that kind of gave you just the um ranger slayer storyline real quick boom 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 it did a very great job of reminding you of everything that you had seen so that you knew exactly where the one shot was picking up. And I feel like Enter House Slaughter is supposed to be the same thing. They're going to reprint some of the key moments from the first, you know, 15 issues. It's going to set up, you know, walking into Erica's origin story with issue number 16. 
unfortunately, the uh, free comic book day issue isn't due out until August because of how things got pushed around this year. So I think that whole timeline is getting kind of messed up and I don't know what that's going to do for the series other than make that free comic book day issue one of the most sought out sought after books in this whole series. So we'll see what comes of that. I really feel like the intent of that is to get people into stores so like they see this and they um, get into something is killing the children and there's this like great new jumping on point for all these people that missed all the other stuff. They could come in here and be like, oh, okay, we're just learning about this character. And then once they like her, they'll go back and read like the story that we know. But I don't see how that's going to work very well now that the book's getting pushed. So bottom line is, I don't know what's going to happen there, but um, yeah, check out Something is kill Killing the Children, number 16. This is supposed to start the origin story for Erica. Whew. So, that was a pretty long list. Yeah, I don't think I can possibly pick up all of these books, but um, it's also going to be nearly impossible to choose which ones I do pick up. So, I might need to sell some books or, um, I don't know, find a side gig for a week or two because... Uh, that's a lot of books, and I get a, I get the feeling and impression that the week after this one's going to be just as packed as well. So we'll see what I do. But as far as like top three, I mean, whoo, action comics. Uh, hmm. Boy, y'all are really asking for a lot out of a top three out of this list. All right, here's what I'm gonna do: action comics from DC, Beta Ray Bill from Marvel, and Better Root number 13, because that book just means too much to me um, to not put it on my top three. Like like I said, I think this story arc is a little bit slower getting started, but Better Root never disappoints, and I think it means more to me than just the book itself. And um, so that that's always going to make my top three, no matter what. But like I said, I mean, you could pretty much pick any three books on this list that you want, and they're probably a top three, so... That is my, uh, that's my list for May the 26th. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave me a comment below and tell me what books you're excited for. Um, tell me what I'm getting right and what I'm getting wrong about all these books. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Look up Cosmic Campfire on podchaser.com. You can rate and review the, the show. You can uh, rate and review individual episodes and things like that. Um, it's a great great way to keep up with um, the podcast side of things. You can um, follow me at League of Comic Geeks. That's where I pull all the information for these videos. That's where I make my list from. Um, I also put out a podcast episode that actually goes through every book that came out this week and any of my thoughts or feelings or ideas about any of those books. Um, and then the other big place I'm at, Patreon. Give me a follow on Patreon. You can see all the content that I put out for free. Um, it's been a little light lately, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of things and get that back on the schedule. So it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed the list. Let me know what books you're excited about in the comments below. And until next time, keep flipping pages. Thank you.